thank you and good afternoon. Um, I'm representing City Creek Reserve and, and SOM um, in our presentation of 111 Maine. You know, it's amazing the, the projects and, and items that we have seen today, the innovation going on. It's truly great people doing great things, um, and I'm so impressed. Um, 111 Main is a 25-story project in, in Salt Lake City. It's Class A office space, um, but it has a structural twist that uh, Peter's going to talk to about. Um, in the process of, of building, well, we had uh, designed a building. We had just finished City Creek Center, a two-block, two-city block retail and residential center in Salt Lake City. Um, the product completely revitalized the core of downtown, which was kind of the goal of what we were doing. Um, but we hadn't added a commercial component for several years. We had a design for the commercial structure adjacent, adjacent to the retail component to further revitalize downtown and, a, and fill a need for Class A office space. At the same time, the Salt Lake City, City and County Redevelopment Agency was seeking a site for a downtown theater. Um, as, we, as we move through our design, and entitlements, the RDA came to us with a dilemma. They needed more land and interior space for a 2,500 seat auditorium. This would require us to do one of two things, either punch columns down through their building adjacent to us, or uh, them find a new site and move on, which as you know, RDAs and uh, cities and counties or jurisdictions have a hard time settling on in anything anyway. So it would have added, added millions and probably years to their schedule. <clears throat> um, at, uh, at this time, uh, SOM's Peter Lee brought an idea to the table of designing and erecting our building in such a way that we hang the building from level 25, allowing us to donate the needed land to the city, county, or RDA, and retain the air rights above and build from level five to 25 as originally designed, but very different. The complexities of this design were many, as you can imagine. The design and construction of both buildings had to run simultaneously on, on the same track. So that was fairly hard to work hand in hand with this building next to us. We had our general contractor and they had their general contractor. We had to completely revise and almost reverse our standard building schedule to accommodate the erection sequence of to get up to the top and then essentially we could start from the top and go down. Um, this also lessened the, the space in our lobby, but, but it allowed us to create a beautiful building that works symbiotically with the neighboring building. Our lobby functions, functions as an extended lobby for show situations, and the theater provides us an additional entrance to 111 Main for mass transit and parking. This design creates some striking views in various aspects. For those that understand how the building is built, the interlocking look of 111 Main and the theater is visible when viewing the building from what is now Main Street. This is uh, on the left. This is looking from the northwest at that, and you can see how it interlocks with that building. The one on the right views from the southwest, and again, it does the same thing. The other 
very visible benefit of this design is the removal of 18 columns on the ground level. This creates a stunning jewel box of a lobby. With 35 foot structural glass that gives us, gives the appearance that the building is floating above the space, this is truly a win-win situation for pu public-private cooperation because of the unique structure that SOM initiated, designed, and helped implement. It also has been a great catalyst for more renovation in the surrounding area. Because of the commercial and artistic uses allowed by this design. Um, I would like to introduce and turn the time over to Peter Lee with SOM to explain other complexities of this construction technique used to complete this project. Peter is, was seminal in the design and implementation of this structural wonder. Thank you. Thank you, Corey, and uh, thank you to C CTBUH for um, the honor to be up here and um, be a finalist nominated for this award, along with the other um, uh, uh, outstanding um, uh, participants and projects. It's an honor. Thank you. Um, with the design concept sketch that Corey showed and a really firm commitment, both of these projects were able to move forward um, on this tight site uh, independently um, with separate but um, parallel design and construction schedules. Let me take a few minutes to tell a story, um, a short story about the, some of the challenges that we undertook as we, um, uh, in, in approaching the um, superstructure uh, de uh, design and construction um, for um, 111 May. So, there were seven columns out of a total of 18 tower columns that needed to be transferred or hung uh, from the top of the building or, or supported. Um, um, and, and if we created an outrigger system, the building um, moved to the south about five inches. Um, moreover, if it so rigidly connected, it, it attracted a lot of seismic forces. If we came from below, that is above level five, and supported it, it was, the load was still eccentric, and um, um, we uh, would eat up very several levels of valuable office space. So what we wanted was more of a balanced design, and we decided to let, we cut all 18 columns at the base of the building, suspending all the columns from a two-way hat truss system at the top, and allowed the columns to come down and terminate where they needed to uh, in the building. What we didn't realize from the beginning was that we weren't going to be able to get any temporary shoring on the south side of this building in order to build what we had proposed. So it became a second dilemma. So the concrete core rises um, up to the mechanical penthouse level at level 25. And um, it supports a two-way uh, hat truss steel system that has a centerline dimension of cord to cord of t approximately 28 feet. The building is pushed up against the height limit, so we couldn't go any taller. The columns um, come down, uh, steel framing, steel columns, they come down and cut off on the south at level five and, and level three on the north. Core extends into a one-story basement, a large pile cap, and a deep foundation system. So um, the project lies in a site of high seismicity. Um, in fact, in a region uh, that it, the site is just 100 meters from the um, Salt Lake segment of the active um, uh, Wasatch Fault System, a system that has seen significant earthquakes in a, over, on average, every 300 years. So in developing the site-specific seismic hazards for this site, 2,400 year return period, we um, considered both horizontal and vertical ground motions. So a challenge here was to balance the gravity load down through the center of the cord. And one, one way we did that is we have unequal uh, 
uh, spans in the office bays, about a five foot difference to balance the load down to the center of the core. The second thing was concerned is that center of gravity of the pile foundation system is centric to what's coming down through the core. We wanted to minimize that for overturning effects. So the building sits on high performance H14 steel driven piles to depth of 110 feet and more, um, um, a total of 373. Here you see the building um, coming out of the ground, one story basin, the piles are placed, uh, um, pile cap is being placed. You see on the top of the screen, the, um, uh, to the south, the, the new um, uh, performing arts um, building, uh, theater, uh, their mat foundation has been poured. Uh, at the ground floor, the out-to-out -out, uh, dimension of the core at the base is about 64 feet by 45 feet. It has 30 inch uh, thick reinforced concrete walls that transfer all gravity lateral forces to the foundations. Here you see it coming out of the ground, cast in place construction at level one, slip form, jump form construction. At this point, you note that the theater is now topped out at their level four. So uh, typical conventional steel floor framing system uh, with concrete fill and metal deck composite. Um, what we did differently is at the perimeter of the building, the building is set up three and a half inches. This is to allow for us to uh, uh, get help from gravity to lower the building down once we transfer the loads from the shore temporary shoring to the hat truss system. To do that, we needed to also include a pore strip around the core and a special hinge condition of each uh, steel beam to the embed with a single standard bolt and horizontal slotted holds to allow for movements during construction staging and um, in the permanent building design. Here you see the building uh, structural steel up to level five and something erected here to the north side of the building, um, what we call the saddle cable system, uh, coming out tempor temporary cables coming out of the reinforced concrete core, picking up, creating a backstay on, on level five, and it's gonna go through the core and create a shoring system on the south side of the building, which I'll talk a little bit more about. At the top of the building, 40% of the building loads come up to the, the, the roof hat trusses and sit on structural bearings that transfer the load um, in, a, in a pure pin connection to the top of the reinforced concrete core. Horizontal forces are taken by shear keys with pockets in the, in the, in the shear walls, and this system allows for thermal expansion uh, slight amounts for the um, environmentally exposed uh, truss system. So there are six total bearings up here at the intersection of the walls and seven shear keys. And the bearings that we used um, are, um, uh, are, 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 are consist of a 40 inch diameter bearing surface, spherical, uh, that allows two degrees of rotation about any axis. They were production tested and um, capacities up to dead life uh, earthquake loads of 19 million pounds. So the, the roof hat trust system itself uh, is over 1,800 tons of steel. Uh, it has three lines in the north-south direction over the core, and two lines in the east-west direction, and at the perimeter there's V-shaped uh, trusses that go out and pick up what at the corners what we called outlier columns, two at each corner in sort of a double cantilever situation. Uh, but all the load gets back to those six bearings. Um, the branch members of the trusses are made up of heavy W14 uh, rolled shapes and then connected to shop fabricated what we call connection nodes uh, pl uh, built up out of plate material. So the, these um, connection nodes are very important in the way they were done, it's designed and detailed for and dimensioned uh, for the, uh, uh, minimize the amount of welding in terms of uh, uh, partial to complete joint penetration welds, residual stresses, weld shrinkage, and the flow of forces under both gravity 
and in peak um, uh, uh, maximum considered earthquake loads. So here you see the placement of one of these uh, nodes on top of a bearing. This is above level 24. Um, on the right, that node weighs about 22 tons. Um, the exposed trusses had two additional challenges. One, obvious, a three-hour fire rating, and the intumescent paint system and the uh, four-layer coating system that was used to protect it. Secondly, um, unique to the exposed condition was the uh, lowest anticipated temperature in Salt Lake City of minus 30 degrees, which is about 80 degrees difference than a regular condition building, which meant that the notch toughness properties of the uh, weld weldments and the weld electrodes uh, needed to be uh, very stringently looked at in changing the design procedures and the welding procedures that we used uh, under size, peak seismic loads. So here you see one of the nodes being fabricated in Pocatello, Idaho. And one of the nodes being assembled on site, bottom cord connection. Typical connections on your left, complete joint penetration weld of a W14 by 730, five inch flanges, top and bottom, complete joint penetration weld, three inch web, um, a challenge. Uh, to keep the preheat temperatures for a weld that takes over hundreds of passes, 34 hours, and usually done by one person. Um, on the right, you see the special inspection and destructive testing that was done for each and every weld. The building being welded out uh, late in the winter of 2015, all the columns are in compression because there's a temporary shoring system underneath. Um, Thought I took this slide out. Okay, I better hurry. <laughs> okay, uh, for the performance-based design, the reinforced concrete core considered uh, dynamic and response history analysis for the 2400-year earthquake, uh, considering uh, ductile flexural yielding and where it was supposed to happen in, in link beams, and, and here you see uh, uh, the sh critical shear stresses. Uh, on the right, you see a, a particular a detail uh, of the wall down at the ground level where they transferred to the diaphragm with backstay effects at level one. So um, I'd like to just spend a couple more minutes on the construction and design and collaboration that took place on the project. We had an idea of this cal uh, uh, saddle cable system to provide temporary shoring on the south side. We could get 11 columns to go down to grade at level one to provide shoring and jacks there. So we met continuously every week in parallel for about 18 months with the, the design and construction team and window wall ma uh, installers and, 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 and developed a strategy in which we would develop a construction se or a sequence of construction, uh, predicting movements and a sequence for transferring the load from the, gravity, from the shores to the trusses. Um, the building was, um, modeled and additional bracing was added. And of particular interest was the saddle cables on three lines, which consisted of two four inch cables, um, 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 high strength with about a thousand tons of breaking strength. And we limited that to about 50% of, of the load that we would permit to, to go to them. And, um, um, uh, it's anchored on the, on the fifth level on the north side, and then in the, on the south side, there were uh, hydraulic jacks on three lines that could monitor the loads and displacements uh, week by week. And on the right, there, there, there was a, uh, the, the cable uh, installation, of the logistics of, of, of just doing that. So once this temporary shoring system was in on the south side, cantilevering over the new theater, we were able to um, catch up with conventional construction and, and, and catch up with the rest of the building um, using uh, and staying on track for a fast track uh, schedule on the project. So we developed a 15 set um, step uh, procedure for limiting the amount of loads and uh, transferring the load. At the top of each column, there um, 
on the right, you see the just below the bottom chord at each column, it's in compression, then it needs to go into tension and it's going to be welded up, longitudinal welds. And we added to each connection two three inch diameter high strength Dewey DAG bars so that we could further adjust this column after the load transfer to control tolerances on the project as needed. Uh, here you see the building. Um, it's progressed to the point just before load transfer. Uh, the window wall went up to about the 18th story. Um, and, and then um, uh, about two weeks later, um, on uh, uh, January, early 2016, uh, Saturday morning, 45 workers walked into the building at 9 o'clock. And, and, and 12 hours later, the building had been dropped in eight, 1 eighth inch increments. And um, um, we were able to. Um, um, the building was able to stay within three-eighths of an inch tolerance at the targeted levels. Um, went, went well. Uh, some of the outlier columns just needed to be tweaked. So um, thank you. Um, uh, this is a contribution that has been made to the city center, at, at, as, as Corey explained. And um, we, we appreciate your time and listening. Uh, we'd also like to just take a moment and you know, like many of the projects that we're here, we listen to here, they're amazing. And they're always great stories and tremendous amount of effort comes down to the individuals that work on it. These are just the leaders of the firms and entities that help make it happen. And um, in particular, I'd just like to uh, single out uh, City Creek Reserve, the developer, uh, Matt Baldwin, um, Sean Tuitt, and Corey, and their team for, for supporting us when we needed to uh, with what we needed at the, at the time. Thank you.